This video covers ServiceNow lists your way, how to make minor changes to ServiceNow lists using filters, breadcrumbs, and personalized list columns so that you see exactly what you need to get your job done. We'll first look at defining filters and some filter examples. Then we'll look at the breadcrumbs display and how you can interact with the breadcrumbs. We'll look at creating a filter through several filter methods, quick filters, custom filters, and two methods for searching. We'll look at saving a filter so that you can reuse filters you've created. And finally, we'll look at personalizing the list columns so that you can see more data on the list than they're there by default. Let's get started. On nearly any table in ServiceNow, we see a filter controlling what is on the list. A filter is simply a set of conditions applied to a list to control what's shown by default. Some filters are very simple. Many of the filters simply show everything. This filter is showing all, in this case showing all incidents. Other filters restrict to some degree. This filter is showing only active incidents. In this case, active equals true is showing only incidents that are active. Some go into more detail. This one is showing only tickets that are active and have no assignment, so they're unassigned. You can see filters throughout the system. Almost any list in the system has some filter. What we're actually looking at here is what we refer to as the breadcrumbs. So we refer to this as the filter, but the view, the actual utility that's showing us the filter is the breadcrumbs list. And the more we modify the filter, the longer the breadcrumbs get. The breadcrumbs is more than just a list, though. We can actually interact with the breadcrumbs. So for example, on this uh, incidents open unassigned, there's actually three filters applied here, three components to the filter, all, which is the beginning of every filter, which is effectively unfiltered, all, followed by active equals true, and unassigned. And there are a few ways we can interact with this filter. The simplest one is by going back all the way to the left and clicking all. Doing so will wipe everything to the right and bring you back to all. We have effectively removed the filter by doing so. So it's a quick way to remove everything that's filtered on the list. I can go back simply by clicking my module on the left, and I can get back to where my filter was. I can do that at any point. So instead of clicking all, I can click active equals true, and you'll notice everything to the right of it is removed. So I can use the breadcrumbs to interact with my filter and quickly modify my filter. I can also drop just one item off in the middle of the filter, and, and fortunately the UI, in my case I'm working in Fuji, the UI shows me that this function that I'm about to perform has worked in ServiceNow for quite a long time. Um, the UI indicating what I'm doing is, is fairly new. Um, if I move over just the, um, the arrow indicating what's to the right of it, you'll see a line drawn through active equals true. And you'll notice the, the box below it says remove condition. So if I, to the, to just to the right of all, and I click the arrow to the right of all, that's going to remove just active equals true. So this allows me to remove just one of the conditions in the filter, um, not the whole filter. So by clicking that, I can get part of my filter. Working with the breadcrumbs is often a very quick way to modify your filter, often undoing maybe a mistake you've made when you've modified your filter. We'll see later in this video how we, how we manually modify that filter. But it's a quick way to modify either an existing filter that you might find in the system or make changes to a filter you've modified. So being able to work with the breadcrumbs is a very quick way to modify the filter. And if you've been watching, you've noticed that this list has changed dramatically as I've modified this. All the lists in the system are live when you modify the breadcrumbs. Okay, so we've looked at breadcrumbs, and you'll see as we go through this, pretty much everything we do as we work with these filters is going to modify the breadcrumbs. That's the whole point. It's giving us that live, live view of the filter. So now that we've looked at breadcrumbs, let's take a look at other ways that we can modify the filters. So the next thing that we can do to modify the filters is a quick filter. We're look, currently looking at all incidents. We can quick filter on nearly every column in this list. A quick filter is done by right-clicking on data in the column. So let's say, for example, that we're looking at incidents and we only care about looking at incidents that are critical. I can right-click on critical in the priority list and choose show matching. This is a quick filter. What it does is it creates a filter that's 
priority equals one critical. You'll notice it's modified the breadcrumbs, it's modified the filter, and I now only see critical incidents. So quick filtering can be done, and I, I can continue to do that. So now I have only priority equals one, and maybe at that point I also only care about incidents, or I care about incidents that are open. I don't really care about closed incidents, so I can also filter out. So I, in that case, I use show matching to only include critical incidents, well now I'm going to start excluding. So I can right click, filter out closed, and maybe I also don't care about resolved as well in my current search, so I'm going to right click, filter out resolved. So I'm using the right click, filter out as well, and that's continuing to modify my filter through quick filters. So it, you'll see again, my filter is changing, I can see it through the breadcrumbs at the top. Uh, all the conditions are being added to that filter here at the top, and I'm doing that through quick filters. So just that combination, just the two things I've shown you so far, those alone are, are the two very simple actions that you can take to modify this list, and many times you can use just those two to get to make very quick changes to the list, and those are used across the system in ServiceNow. Pretty much any list you come to, you can use those two changes to modify your list. Now you may need to go further than that though. You may find that you want to make changes that are a little more dramatic than that. And so the next thing that we're going to look at is look at custom filtering. So if you need to go further than that, you can click on the filter symbol, which is the show hide for the full filter, and you'll actually get the full filter UI. Some people refer to this as the custom filter UI. Uh, so what the first thing that happens is it actually draws out the full filter UI for the filter that's already been created. These are all the conditions for that filter. So we'll read through them real quick. We can see priority is critical. We got that through our show matching on critical. And then we have a series of states where I was um, filtering out when I was right clicking and filter out, choosing filter out through the quick filter for closed and resolved. I can add, I can remove any of those. So if I decide that I don't want resolved, I can just uh, close that. When I'm using custom filtering, I do have to click the run button when I'm done. It doesn't run them the second I add or remove them. I do have to click run. So that's one difference when you're custom filtering. Keep that in mind. You do have to click run when you've made your changes. But you can add and remove going through that list. So for example, I can say I would like to do another and. I can choose caller and I have a, I have a list of condition controls and this list will change based on the data type. So you have a lot of controls and it is and is based on the data type and you'll notice I have a lot of flexibility in here. So I can do things like starts with and ends with and is the same and is different. Things that you wouldn't be able to do simply with a right click. So I can say contains and I could say bow. So maybe I want everything with, and you'll notice that when I typed in bow, it also looked for matches in the list as well. So that's a nice feature. But I, in my case, I just want to have it contains bow, and I just want to run that. So now I have a list of all priority one critical incidents that are not closed that have the name bow somewhere in them. This is a very common type of filter to build when you're trying to narrow it down to a small number of callers to figure out if these particular users have open incidents. We can also search for um, information in here, and searching will add to the filter as well. So let's reset this filter, again clicking all, and I am going to go search. Maybe this time I will search somebody else. I will search for rich as the caller, and when I search for rich, it's going to add to the filter. So searching also modifies the filter, either searching at the table level or searching at the column level. So, so these are all different methods that I can use to modify the filter. And all of these combine together. And again, if I go and show the whole filter, you can see how that has modified the filter. So if you're ever unsure, if you want to go build a custom filter, but you're not exactly sure what you want to put in there, one of the easiest ways to do that is do a few searches and then go and look at the filter and see what it's created. So the last thing I want to show on filters before we take a couple of minutes and look at personalizing list columns is that we can save filters. There's two major methods to save filters. The first one is the easiest, which is how to save a filter for yourself. So let's say that this particular filter you just fell in love with and um, you wanted to make sure you could always get back to it easily. 
the easiest way to do that is to simply save it to your bookmark bar. This will save the filter just for you, but it will always be available easily. All you have to do is go to the end of the breadcrumbs, make sure you're at the end, the last item, left click and hold and drag and drop it on your bookmark bar. It's that simple. As soon as you've done that, you now have a link directly to that list with that filter. Uh, if you're familiar with the bookmark bar, there's a lot of editing you can do to this, change the icon, change the name, make it a fly out. There's lots of other things you can do. I won't go into that in this video, but you're welcome to experiment with that. But you can do that with any breadcrumbs. So it's a great way to create a filter just for you, make it available to get to anytime you want. But you may find that you have a filter that you'd like to share with other people. That comes up fairly often. So you can also go into the filter and you can save it. And depending on what permissions you have, you may be able to save it for yourself, for everyone, or for a group. You give it a name, and in this case, I'll save it for a group. So we can save this filter for an individual as well. So I'll save it for me as well. And those filters can be found here. So go up to filters and you'll see them in the list. And you also have the ability to edit them as well. We've looked at all of the aspects of filtering. Now let's take a look at what if the columns that we see don't have the data we want. One of the things that you may have noticed that when we were looking at the filter, especially editing the filter manually, is that we have access to all of the columns on that table. Uh, but we may not have access to see all the columns in the list, and that's because each of those lists has a default set of columns that are visible. But we have the ability to personalize the list columns. Uh, that is just the gear symbol here, right below the filter list. So we just click the gear symbol. All of the columns that we have the ability to see is on the left. All of the columns that are visible are on the right. We simply scroll down the list, Select the column we wish to see, closed for example, maybe closed by would be a good one, and you can either double click it or hit the right arrow, and then once it's there you can use the up or down to figure out where to put it, and click OK. That will add it to the list. This list has been modified for you and you alone, and once you have done that, you will now be able to see that additional value, which means that not only can you see it, but you now get some additional options. For example, you can quick filter by that. So if you make a variety of these changes, then you may eventually get to the point where it's kind of a mess. You can always revert. You can, first of all, there's a minor, very small indication that it has been modified. This little tiny dot is an indication that you have modified this list. You can always go back and reset it by clicking the reset to column defaults. So it's very easy to get back to the defaults if you need to do that, but uh, which I will do here. But that is a quick way to make a modification to this list just for you so that if you need to see a few other fields that are not by default visible on the list, you can do so. And again, it also gives you the ability to quick filter on those, although you can filter on them with the custom filtering even if they're not visible on the list. Hopefully that information was useful. Thank you for watching.